Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to continue to work on the TVR and more specifically we're going to replace the seals on the valves uh, on the SX V6 motor. And typically you would replace the valve stem seals with the cylinder head removed from the engine block but in this case we're going to replace them with the cylinder head in place. And what you see right here is not the cylinder head of a Ford SX V6, but this is the cylinder head of a Pinto 2 liter. But I'm going to use it to give you an example on where these seals are and how we are going to replace them before we do the actual work. Here we have the typical valve and the valve spring, and I'm just going to remove the valve spring now. And this is the valve, uh, which is fitted into the uh, cylinder head, resting on the valve seat and the stem is going either to a valve a guide or straight in through a bore inside the cylinder head and then it sticks out and then on the top we have the tumbler and then of course the springs they go over it something like this and then they are held in place by some clips on the top now where the valve stem sticks out of the cylinder head we should actually use a seal and this is a seal that is typically fitted on that. And let me show you on how that is fitted normally. Now the Ford SX V6 is very similar in terms of seals as the Pinto engine. So that's why I'm using this cylinder head because that's the one I'm having laying around. So this is the top view of the cylinder head. And of course these valves are not sitting like this, but this is just for me so I don't lose them from the right location. But in essence, these valves are coming through the valve guide. So let me put that valve up and then we can see how that pops out. There we go, there comes the valve. And then typically, as we said before, the valve spring goes around it. It's been depressed and held in place with a couple of clips that you would find right here. Now the valve seal is going to sit right there over that little stud here. So it has to go over the valve stem like so and then be fitted and pushed down firmly onto that seat right here. Now I haven't pushed it all the way down because that's not the final fitting. If I push it a bit more then you can see where this is supposed to sit. So now we have a seal which is sealing off the valve stem and there is a good reason for that. At what moment in time should we actually change those seals? Well the way I look at this is very simple. If I have a car and I start it up after it's been sitting there for a while and I see blue smoke coming out of the exhaust only during the start moment, then I know that there is an oil leak through the valve stems into the cylinders. And that means that these seals are gone. That's the moment in time I'm going to change them. Now, of course, if you do a total overhaul of your engine, then you do it as well. And if you really want to work on your valves and all this, and, and you have everything apart already, it's a little effort to change them. And it will make a big difference. So so how are we doing this? Well, first of all, of course, you need to remove the valve cover. I already undid the screws before, so it's easy for you to see and I don't waste too much time. Once the valve cover is removed, then we can actually look at the valve. So this is cylinder number one, cylinder two, and cylinder number three. Uh, cylinder number one, exhaust, cylinder number one, intake. Just look where the valve is, aligned with the exhaust or with the intake, and then you know exactly where that is supposed to be or where it is. Not much to it. Um, the next step we're going to do is then rotate the engine until cylinder number one or the cylinder we're working on is at the top that center and therefore we're going to look at the valves and see at which moment, which moment in time they are fully closed so you will have play on both rockers and we check with a screwdriver inside the hole of the spark plugs to see if the piston is at top that center. Uh, so it's best to remove, first of all, all the spark plugs. So let me now rotate the engine until we have the engine for cylinder number one at its top dead center. Shift, and I'm going to rotate the engine until I see the valves in the right position. So now you can see the exhaust valve of cylinder number one is opening up. So that means the piston is going up. Then the piston will be at the end and going down and the inlet valve will open up. So now the inlet valve opens up. A piston comes back up now because the inlet valve is now closing. Now we're getting a compression stroke and now we're going to check for the uh, top that center mark on the pulley. 
And here we are, we got it now at the right place. Do a little screwdriver test and see if we actually are atop that center for cylinder number one. And we are. Now that is important, guys, that you do have this set to top that center because for two reasons. The first reason is that we go into um, make sure that these valves have the play because we have to readjust them afterwards. And secondly, uh, you don't want the valve to be falling down once we're changing uh, the seal on the valve stem. Now that you have the cylinder in the right place, so top that center, we can start to work on it. However, we need to block the motor. So it's always good to put it in gear or whatever, block it in whatever way so that the engine can't move. And the reason for that is that is because we're going to put compressed air into the cylinder. And I'm putting in about 40 PSI, not a, not a hell of a lot. But of course, I will put pressure on the piston. I will try to rotate the engine, and that's why we need to block it. Now, to put air into the cylinder we're working on, I'm just using a very simple hose. You've seen that before when we did the compression test. And I'm going to hook it up to my air compressor on the other side. If you don't have a hose like this, no big deal. Take an old spark plug, knock it into pieces, and solder a connector on it so you can attach an air hose to it. But don't hook up the air hose yet, because there's something else we need to talk about before we can actually start doing it. Next is to remove the tumbler or the rocker, which is now leaning on top of the valve stem. And for that, uh, we'll have to unbolt it. Uh, in this case, there's only one big nut to do. We'll do two nuts, one for each tumbler. And then uh, we'll take that off. We keep it in place. We remember where parts come from, because that's important. Never mix parts up on an older engine. And then uh, we need to find a way to compress that valve spring to remove these clips. And for that, I'm using a very cheap tool. Uh, this is like $10, 10 euros. And you can use the tool to hook it behind something. And I have made myself a little attachment for that. And then the other side right here is actually leaning or pushing on the, uh, the spring itself on the valve. And then you push it and you're actually pushing it down. And then you can remove the clips and then the valves spring will come off. Uh, so this is a handy tool. They come in all kinds of shapes and forms. And I think it's even called a valve seal removal tool without removing the cylinder head, something like this. This is what I found on the internet. I, I, this is quite handy and cheap, and it saves you a lot of hassle. Um, I haven't used it on this car, by the way. I used tools like this before on other cars, so this is the first time I'm going to use this tool on this car, so I have to be a bit honest, and you probably noticed how shiny it is, so uh, it won't last long like this. Anyway, uh, you'll see how we do it. So let us remove the um, tumblers or the rockers, and then um, I'll show you the attachment that I've made uh, to make it a bit easier. So let's remove the tumblers, and they should all be loose. The piston should be in the right position, and for that we just need a socket, and we can just unlock it. Now these nuts are self-locking nuts, so this it's pretty easy. So let me remove this, and then we'll move the rocker and place them on the side. And we're going to do the same for the second valve on cylinder number one. And remember, we're going to keep things in place where they were. And now I have access to both springs, both the exhaust and the intake uh, spring. And to release these little clips, I'm going to shock the spring a little bit by just giving it a slight knock. And for that, I'm just using a socket that I put on there, and then we're just going to give it a hit. And that should be enough. And now it's time to install the tool. And the tool that I'm using is nothing really special. It's a piece of nylon with a hole in the middle that I can slide over there like so. Then I can put the bolt up and hold it in place. And now I have something to put my pliers against. So let me show you that. And so hopefully my hand is not in the way. So I can grab behind that and then I can put the other side of the tool on top of the valve. 
uh, spring and then I can depress it as you see. So before we continue, we're going to connect the compressed air hose uh, to the cylinder. And now we're going to hook up the air hose to this. So we have actually uh, compressed air into the cylinder, about 20 to 40 psi, not too much. All right, so let's hook it up. All right, so let's give it a try and see if we can remove it. And now you see, I can get to it, and that's where the clips are. And it's a bit of fiddling to get them out sometimes, but you can. So I'm gonna use my magnet. Again. That's one. See, here it is. All right, that's out. It's on the ground, but we can pick it up. Now we can remove the tool. There we go. It's a bit clumsy with the camera in the way, but now I can actually remove the valve spring. Right there, we've got the old seal. Here it is, see? And in fact, see how loose that is? So this seal is gonna go up and down and see how much play it has. So this seal is really uh, worn out and no good. So here you have the two seals. That's the old one, that's the new one. And look how wide this opening is compared to that one. Hopefully you can see it. And see if I can hold it like this maybe. And then you can see the difference in opening. So for sure the old seal was worn out. So here's the new seal. Um, I have it warmed up a little bit because it's quite cold in the barn here. So all you need to do is slide it down and then push it properly down on the bottom so it sits on that bottom stud. And that's it, we are done. The seal is in. So now we can close that valve up and then work on the next one. So I'm going to put the spring back up. We're going to reinstall the tool. We're going to depress the spring and then put those little clips in. And they are a little bit of a pain in the butt to put them in sometimes. Sorry guys if my hand is in the way, but this is a bit of fiddling. So the first clip is in. Now I need to put the second clip in. So what I want to do now is rotate the clip that's in a bit more upwards. I'm going to change the handle here a bit because I want to press See if I press, I'm pressing too much down on this side and I want to press a bit more vertical on it. So let me do that. I readjusted the key a little bit so it's gonna go a bit easier now. So getting these clips in can be a little bit tricky but I'm using some pliers and then put the top one in first and then the bottom one and then it should be okay. Move the spring up and down a couple of times, make sure that they are settled and then everything should be all right. So I think this is the first valve we have done. And I think the locks are sitting really nice and tight and that's what you want to have. I'm just gonna shock it once just to make sure everything is okay. Making sure these clips are in the right place. That's very important and they are. So now I will do the second valve, exactly the same procedure. You might have noticed that when I was trying to put the clips in, it wasn't all that easy because the spring was a little bit bending to one side. And that was just because the tool wasn't adjusted right. So I actually had to move the push uh, elements here a little bit more forward and a little bit more up. So that way I had a more straight push down of the spring. So th that's why this tool is so handy because you can put it in so many different positions. I've done the two valves. Uh, it was a bit of fiddling. But that is expected, so now we can actually remove the pressure in the cylinder because we don't need that anymore. The valves are secured. However, you still want to shock those a little bit. And for that, we're gonna reuse 
a socket and knock on it so that these clips certainly fit properly because that's very important. You don't want these clips to be malfitted. But you can actually see if you look closely that they are fitted quite all right. And of course, we can remove now our little aid here, the little tool. You can make another tool as well if you want. You can use any kind of tool you really like to use, but I like this. Again, uh, I'm gonna use a socket, which is big enough, and then I'm just gonna hit it. And you will hear it. This sounds good, see? And then it fits really nicely. Uh, make sure that you do that each time. And now it's time to put all the original parts back in their original spot. And make sure that the push rod there fits properly in the rocker. That's, that's important. So the next step is to lock down these bolts. Um, to a point where they are holding the rocker properly, but not all the way that we push open the valve, because that should not be the intent. We're just going to push it all the way up to the valve, and then we'll do the valve adjustment, as the engine is still in the proper position, of course. So let me do that. Now, the good thing about these bolts is, these are self-locking bolts. I have no more play, and I want to make sure everything fits properly, and it does. So now we can do the adjustment on this valve. But first I'm going to do the other valve and lock that in place. I'm sorry if I'm in the way, guys. Now this is locked in place solidly. Uh, let's see. I don't exaggerate, I just slightly turn it on. Right, and now I'm going to back off. A little bit more. All right, back off a bit. All right, so now I'm going to adjust those two valves. I know the piston is atop that center and the valve should be fully closed. Now, normally you have to adjust the valve clearance when the engine is hot or warm, but I can't do this right now. So I'm going with cold settings. So the next thing now is to adjust the valve clearance. And as I said before, you should do this normally on a warm engine, but I can't do it. So we have to go with cold settings. And I found some pre-settings, uh, which are probably gonna work out just fine. Now to do that, you're gonna need some gauges uh, to check the clearance between the rocker and the top of the valve stem. Now I have to put my glasses on to let you know exactly what the clearance should be. So the outlet valve should have 20 tau or 0.51 millimeters of clearance. So you gotta find out the right field gauge uh, for that and then we can adjust that. And the inlet valve is 12 tau or 0.3 millimeters. Um, and that's when the engine is cold. Uh, once the engine is hot uh, or warm, once we started it up, we have to readjust them to uh, outlet being um, 18 thou or 0.46 millimeters and the inlet uh, valve should be at that time 10 thou uh, or 0.25 uh, millimeters. So this is something we'll have to redo um, once the engine is warm. But at least for now we can put it in a good starting position or initial position, let's say. So uh, let's start doing that. So let's do the outlet valve first and then find out where we have the 20 thou. Um, uh, 12, 16, okay, here is my 20 thou or 0.5 millimeters. So that would be the one for my outlet valve. So let's go and do it. The method is very simple. Just slide it in between the rocker and the valve stem, the top of the valve stem, as you can see now, it's tight, so I need to loosen up this bolt here. All right, so let's see. Now it's too much, of course. And let's start locking it down a bit and then see what we have. It should not be stuck. It should slide in between. I think it still is a little bit loose, so I'm gonna give it a little bit more. 
can see it's still a little bit too loose. So you're going to tighten it up a little bit. Still a little bit loose. Turn it a bit more. And now it starts to grab a little bit. All right, this feels good. I think this is all right. You will feel it uh, once you stick that in there, how that feels. Uh, it should not be sticky. It should have a slight resistance, not a lot. So now we're going to do the inlet valve. This should be 12 thaw or 0.3 mil. You can see here, of course, this is wide open. So now we're going to lock that down a little bit. And at the same time, we will be feeling Now it starts to grab a little bit. Yeah, and I think this is a bit just too much. A little bit back. And you see it's the very small increments I use on on my key here or my wrench. Yeah, I might do a little bit more. Just a little bit. There we go. I think this is all right. And with the first cylinder fixed, I'm going to rotate the engine a couple of times just to see how the valves are doing, making sure everything is all right. And I think this is looking quite, quite good. So, And just check, check in on the seals to make sure they don't come up when the valve moves up and they don't, so we are good. And I'm going to do this one more time and then check the clearance at the end after we rotated it a couple of times. All right, we are back at top that center compression stroke, so now the clearance should still match up. So let's see. Yeah, that still feels all right. And let's check the exhaust valve. And that also feels all right. So folks, we are nearing the end of this video. And so far we have installed new seals on the valve stems on cylinder number one. I'm now going to continue with all the other five cylinders. And then in the next episode, uh, we're going to mount the new covers and need to make some adjustments. We're going to check as well what the issue is with the spark plugs having different colors. If you have seen the previous video, then you know what I mean. Uh, we're going to put new spark plugs in, of course. Uh, and I guess then we'll start mounting the cooling system because the parts have arrived from Racetag. All right. So thank you for viewing and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.